This is Jeffrey E. Johnson. I am an orthopedic surgeon at Washington University School of Medicine, and this is a video on how to perform the Robert Jones dressing. This is a commonly used dressing for many of our foot and ankle applications. These are the layers that will be going on to the dressing, and I will go through each one of these as we, as we apply this dressing. Here are two tables set up to show all the uh, ingredients uh, for this dressing. We first will start with applying the incisional dressing right against the wound and then some additional uh, 4x4s that are opened up so there are no creases. This will be held on with a sterile web roll or cotton undercast padding. The ABDs are important to keep uh, pressure off the high uh, pressure points in the foot such as the bottom of the metatarsal heads and the heel. Then the bulky Jones cotton is applied and then more cast padding, more 4-inch uh, cast padding is applied around the, the Jones cotton to provide some compression. Once the initial compression is applied to the Jones cotton, then the plaster splints are applied in the next layer. You'll see these are two sets of 5-inch by 30-inch plaster splints, and these will be applied, one as a posterior splint and one as a, a U-splint dressing. The plaster splints are then held on with a 6-inch cling to uh, unify the dressings together. This is a patient who has just had a total ankle joint replacement with a heel cord lengthening and there is an incision on the bottom of the foot. So there's three incisions we're covering with dressings at this time. Notice how the assistant is very helpful to hold these dressings on and hold the foot at the same time in the neutral position so that we get the dressings on without a lot of folds or creases which could cause an area of compression against the skin. These dressings are then held on with some sterile cast padding or web roll. Notice how the assistant from now on throughout the rest of the application of this dressing will be supporting the ankle joint in neutral so that the, so that the dressing is applied and completed with the ankle at 90 degrees. I'm now wrapping on the, uh, the dressings with a sterile cast padding or web roll. These are uh, ABD pads, um, which are optional. I prefer them because the cotton, if it gets wet, will subside and it's not as good a, um, it, it does not function as well as a, as a pad. Therefore, I use this to protect the, the uh, bottom of the foot. After the initial dressing is held on with sterile web roll, the, the entire leg is then covered with at least one layer of this undercast padding so that the Jones cotton does not contact the skin, which can cause some, some itching and the, and the uh, uh, cotton sometimes gets stuck to the skin. So this is a nice underlayment between the Jones cotton and the patient's skin. Once the dressings are held in place, and that's typically with a sterile um, cast padding, then the non-sterile cast padding is used typically four inches wide and it's used to cover the rest of the leg. The reason for this is to provide an, an underlayment of a mild compression and also be a barrier between the, the bulky Jones cotton, which sometimes can be a little itchy for patients uh, if, it's, if it's up against the skin. It's important to continue beyond the tips of the toes so that when we fold the dressing over at the end, it's in the proper location. This is the bulky Jones cotton. It sometimes comes as a wider dressing, and this has been cut down so that we can make, uh, it, make it around the bend at the ankle. Um, without having a lot of uh, folds uh, in the material. Usually it takes two of these rolls to cover one lower extremity. Notice how I'm overlapping them by just a little bit, but it's, it's only one layer. Next, this is the critical part of the dressing. This is where the compression is applied. The 4-inch non-sterile web roll is applied in this manner by pushing down on the roll, much like you would push on a rolling pin rolling out dough. And the flat of the hand is used to roll this cotton roll around the leg, holding compression so that the, under, uh, so that the underlying Jones cotton is compressed to some extent by pushing on uh, this with your hand. And then with the recoil of, of the Jones cotton, this sets the compressive force that you're applying to the dressing. This is a very safe dressing because the uh, cast padding that's used as this top layer uh, is relatively weak and you really can't 
over compress this unless you were to put many, many rolls uh, around uh, the, the, the uh, Jones cotton. If you notice, sometimes these cast rolls will tear as I'm pushing them around. And once they get small like this, it, it, it's difficult to get the proper amount of compression. So I usually use about two thirds of the roll and, the discard, and then discard it uh, for a fresh roll. Generally, we cover the entire surface of the, of the Jones, um, bulky Jones cotton. Notice how the assistant is holding the ankle at neutral position at all times. If the ankle should drop into a plantar flex position and this dressing is applied with the ankle in plantar flexion and then the ankle is forced into dorsiflexion when the splints are applied, this will create a crease or a wrinkle in the, in the uh, uh, cotton material over the front of the ankle and create a compression in that area. This is often very annoying to the patient and uh, sometimes requires the dressing to be changed. So I usually cover the dressing until it's completely covered with web rolls so that there's no Jones cotton uh, protruding. At this point, you check to see how much compression you have and there should be uh, uh, some uniform compression and slight tautness to the, uh, to the overwrap. This is the first set of splints. This is a 10 ply, five inch wide by 30 inch long splint. The water we use is slightly warm, typically much warmer than you'd use for a cast which can have problems uh, with overheating, but plaster splints don't overheat as much and they set up much faster if you have uh, the, the uh, water temperature just slightly warm. Notice how the, the plaster splint is applied about an inch or two below the top of the cotton dressing because once this dressing is folded over, uh, the edge of that plaster um, needs to be away from the edge of the skin. On the distal end, the uh, the, the plaster splint is folded obliquely to follow the, the cascade of metatarsal links. For instance, it is longer than on the first metatarsal side and shorter on the fifth metatarsal side. And this allows the toes to protrude from the cast but still have good support under the metatarsal heads. The second dressing is a, is a U dressing or stirrup dressing. And notice how the top edge of that dressing is going to be, a, it will be applied at the metatarsal heads. This provides the best mechanical advantage to holding the ankle joint in the neutral or 90 degree position. Notice how I lean on the foot uh, whenever I have an opportunity to take uh, a little stress off my assistant, but also to, to make sure uh, that I am uh, keeping the ankle at 90 degrees. The next layer is the cling, uh, uh, cling wrap. This is uh, much less um, uh, uh, stretchable than any of the other materials we've applied so far, but this is applied loosely. And uh, the, the, the wet plaster of the splints will become uh, impregnated into uh, the spaces in this dressing, and it creates a very nice, rigid, biomechanically stable uh, splint. So as you see, it's not applied uh, in any way in, in a tight, uh, tight manner. The last layer is the elastic bandage. This is a six inch bandage and it's a double length as you can see from the size of this roll. Before we apply the elastic bandage, uh, there is some padding that will be applied to the bottom of the foot plate for, for comfort. This uh, padding is, is, uh, is applied after opening up the toe box and then folding it over the bottom of, of the, uh, the toe plate um, on the splint. Then the elastic bandage is applied wrapping it on the foot first around the toe plate. Notice how the first wrap goes circumferentially around the toe plate and then down under the heel and directly back up and over the toes. This way, the bandage is applied in, in the proper direction so that when we fold it over, it will stay in place. For aesthetic reasons, we cover the entire white dressing beneath. This is applied with some gentle firmness, certainly not tight. The wrap then extends above the cotton on the leg, and then this will be uh, folded over and uh, turned under to make a, a fresh edge. We have found that using uh, tape is a, is a better method than the, uh, the metal clips that often come with these uh, elastic dressings.
metal clips can fall off. They can fall into the dressing or into the patient's bed, uh, and the tape is uh, safer and uh, more stable. At this point, the toe box is opened up to provide plenty of room for the toes. This is one of the most uh, uncomfortable aspects of the dressing if not done properly. Patients do not like their toes squeezed, and so placing a finger down either side of the foot to spread open the, the toe box is very helpful. Notice my thumbs are holding the bottom of the foot plate straight, and to prevent the natural curl that will occur just from the memory in, in the materials that are, were applied. At the top end of the dressing, the give and go maneuver is done to tear the top layers of cotton so that there is absolutely no constriction uh, to a venous outflow on the leg. Then the uh, top of the elastic bandage is folded under and we make sure again at the end of this that we can easily fit two fingers under the top edge of the dressing. The splints are held at 90 degrees and the toe plate is held open until they harden ensuring that the ankle's at 90 degrees. This is just showing you that, that we achieved 90 degrees in this patient. In addition, if you put the dressing on right, there's a little resonance to this, much like a drum. You can tap on the, on the side of the leg and you'll get a little nice soft sound that tells you that you've, you've achieved the proper compression. So that's the dressing. The patient still has to keep their foot elevated, obviously, but this is an excellent way to protect the foot, provide some compression, uh, protect the wound. It absorbs any bleeding or drainage, and it wicks it away from uh, the skin incision area, and generally it's uh, very well tolerated. I hope this video has been helpful. Uh, thank you for watching.